Dear friends in Christ, Jimmy Wayne never learned to trust a soul. That's why he never unpacked his bag. And we can't blame him. He never knew his father. And his mother spent more time in jail than out of jail. When he was a small child, his mother got out of jail again and took up with a troublemaker again. They loaded Jimmy into the back seat of the old Delta 88, and for a year, that Oldsmobile served as Jimmy's home. He learned never to trust a soul. And again, that's why he never unpacked his bag. After living in the back seat of that car for one year, Jimmy Wayne was dumped off at a train depot in Pensacola, Florida. His mother and her boyfriend sped away in that Delta 88. Jimmy Wayne desperately needed a new beginning. And during the season of Lent, we have been going through the book of Exodus. And today we consider Exodus chapter 34. And it's all about a new beginning. Aaron, Israel's high priest, needed a new beginning. So did Israel. And most certainly, so do you and I. A new beginning is absolutely necessary. If you were with us last Wednesday, you know why. See, last Wednesday, Pastor Nathan told us how Aaron and the Israelites were faced with this huge crisis. They had not seen Moses for 40 days and 40 nights. They didn't know what had happened to him. Was he dead? Did he leave them? Aaron and the Israelites grew impatient. And so what did they do? They wanted a God to follow, so they made their own God, a golden calf, and they worshipped it. When Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, he sees how the people have sinned against the Lord. And in Moses' anger, he smashed the Ten Commandments to pieces. He actually had it ground up along with the golden calf. He mixed it with the water, and he made the people drink it. We pick up the story here in Exodus chapter 34 with these words. Then Yahweh, and Yahweh is the Hebrew word for Lord, it's the personal name of God. Then Yahweh told Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones. I will write on them the same words that were on the tablets you smashed. The reality was the Ten Commandments were smashed, not just by Moses, but by the people of God. And that's why a new beginning is absolutely necessary. And let's face it, we are not that much different from Aaron and from the Israelites. I mean, what do we do when we face a crisis? Oftentimes we become angry, impatient, faithless, and selfish. We turn to our own golden calf, whatever that golden calf might be, and we look to it in order to get us out of our mess. We look to it for salvation. God, the holy, righteous, and perfect God, this God has every right to dump us off at a train depot in Pensacola, Florida, and ride off into the sunset. God has every right to abandon us because we have abandoned him. We have smashed his commandments. We have ignored his will. God is completely justified if he turns his back on us. But he doesn't. That is not who God is. And because God does not turn his back on you and me and the people that he loves, a new beginning is totally possible. Our text says, Then Yahweh came down in a cloud and stood there with Moses, and he called out his name, Yahweh. Yahweh frequently comes down in the book of Exodus, and that's significant. In Exodus 3.8, Yahweh comes down in the burning bush. In Exodus 19.20, Yahweh comes down on Mount Sinai. 
In Exodus 40, verse 34, Yahweh comes down to fill the tabernacle with his glory and honor. Here's the point. We cannot go up to God. It's impossible. And so God comes down to us, right where we are, in the basement of our broken promises and vows, our broken commandments. And what does God do when he comes down? Does he scold us? Does he berate us? Does he shame us? Does he reject us or condemn us? No, he doesn't. God cries out, Yahweh, Yahweh, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and lifting up wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And because God comes down to meet us where we are, a new beginning really is possible. It's possible because God is compassionate. In the Bible, compassion means so much more than just feeling sorry for someone. It is more than a feeling. Biblical compassion is hurting so much for another person that you have to get involved to help them. My friends, you need to understand that God hurts for you. He hurts when he sees how you suffer. God hurts when he sees how you and I get trapped in our sin. God hurts when he sees how the people that he loves become enslaved to the forces that want to rob us of the life he's always intended for us to enjoy. And so God, because he hurts for us, comes down and does something that we cannot do for ourselves. He gets involved to be our Savior. And that's why a new beginning is possible. Because God is not going to abandon you. He looks at you with compassion. God is also slow to anger. And thank God for that. Because if God were quick to anger, his compassion would not last a second, in, at least in my life. If God shot rockets at me every time I messed up, every time I was unfaithful, every time I sinned, I would be blown to smithereens. But God is slow to anger. And he doesn't give me what I deserve. That's called grace. God is also abounding in steadfast love. Abounding announces that God's love is limitless. Limitless. In a way, you know, since tomorrow is tax day, you can kind of compare God to the federal government. You know, whenever there is a need, God just prints off More steadfast love. But there is a big difference. God can always cover what he writes. God has an infinite treasury of steadfast love to cover the currency that he prints. God loves you beyond your wildest imagination. His ability to love you is infinite. It will never run out. Regardless of whether you feel God loves you or not, the truth is he does. And he has proven it to you over and over again. And because God is compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love, more love than we can ever imagine, listen to what he does for us. He lifts up wickedness, rebellion, and sin. There are only three Hebrew words in the Old Testament for sin. And God uses all three right here. And you know why that is? He wants you to know, he wants me to know, he wants all of his people to know that he lifts up every type of sin. 
There are no categories of unforgivable sins when it comes to God looking at you and me. Yahweh the Lord lifts up wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And let's just clarify those terms for just a second. Wickedness means twisted. It means we are depraved. We are crooked people bent in on ourselves. We are consumed with self. God lifts that off of us. Rebellion refers to the fact that we have indeed committed treason against our covenant king. The penalty for treason, as you know, is death. But God lifts that off of us. And the third word, sin, means missing the mark. The Ten Commandments are the bullseye. We take aim, we shoot, and more times than not, we miss. Yahweh lifts up our wickedness, our rebellion, and our sin. He takes it from us. And where does he put it? That's why we celebrate Palm Sunday. Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem on a donkey on a Sunday because the following Friday on a place called Calvary on the cross, God himself will lift up all the mess that we have made. He will lift up all the wickedness, all the rebellion, all the sin, and he will place it upon himself. Jesus is Yahweh in the flesh. The compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and lifting up wickedness, rebellion, and sin. As we go through the next week called Holy Week, we will see Jesus teaching this kind of love. We will see Jesus living this kind of love. We will see Jesus demonstrating this kind of love by shedding his blood on the cross for you and for me. Palm Sunday announces it. Good Friday shows it. And Easter Sunday celebrates it. It is the most amazing week in human history. Let's go back to our opening illustration. One day, while aimlessly walking around Pensacola, Florida, Jimmy Wayne spotted a man named Russ working in his garage. Soon, Rush, Russ and his wife, B invited Jimmy to live with them. The home was like heaven to Jimmy Wayne. It had a hot bath, hot meals, and it even had TV. And yet, Jimmy still never learned to trust. And he wouldn't unpack his bag. I have said a couple times this morning that God wants us to enjoy a new beginning. He knows that we're broken. He loves us just the way we are, but he doesn't want us to stay there. He loves us too much to keep us as broken people. But the truth is, a new beginning is entirely optional. We can refuse to unpack our bag. In other words, we can reject divine love. We can be callous and aloof. Did you notice how Moses responded to God's love? Right at the end, it says, Moses immediately threw himself to the ground and worshipped. I invite you to join Moses Trust that God is who he says he is. Repeat to yourself, Yahweh, Yahweh, until it surpasses the voices that oftentimes bombard us, especially when we consider how fallen and broken we are. 
those voices of fear and shame and guilt and blame. Throw yourself before Yahweh your God and let God do what he longs to do, and that is to give you a new beginning. To put it another way, you can be a sponge or you can be a rock. You put a rock in the ocean and what happens? The surface gets wet, but the inside of the rock stays untouched. But put a sponge in the ocean and what happens? It absorbs the water. The ocean saturates the sponge. God's abounding, steadfast love surrounds us like an ocean. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, it is all a display of incredible love that God wants us to experience. What's our response? Rock or sponge? Jimmy Wayne had been rejected so many times that he was more like a rock. His heart was hard and impenetrable. And we get that. We really do, because we know what it's like to be betrayed and abandoned. That's why Jimmy never unpacked his bag. It took a while. But Russ and B finally convinced Jimmy that their love for him really was real. And so finally, finally, Jimmy Wayne unpacked his bag. Jimmy Wayne is now a famous country music singer and songwriter and motivational speaker. And it all began because he received a new beginning when he learned to trust, when he finally unpacked his bag. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's Palm Sunday. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our past is behind us. God's grace is before us, and a new beginning awaits us. So what do we do? My friends, it's time to unpack our bag. We have a home. We belong to someone who loves us, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Please rise.